Hi there! Another quick video, or maybe a follow-up to my previous one, where I showed you a quick and crude way to find a bad RAM bank on IMD boards. And this time I wanted to share with you more elegant software solution for this problem, because a lot of times you do not have any artifacts on display, but you still have a bad memory. So, I had this idea to write some simple script on Linux for a while now, but number one rule in any form or type of coding is always check before you type a single line of code, because probably it's already done before you. So I done just that and found a very neat piece of code written in Python that I want to share with you guys. So let's jump right into it. Let's go to Google and let's search for direct mem test.pi. And we have a GitHub of, it seems, guy called Kalkin VV. And there is not a lot of info here. As you can see, there is a readme file. And even though my Russian is quite rusty, but I can understand that this is not a readme file for this script here, is just his repair log. Okay, so let's download all the repository. Let's extract it. And the file we need is called direct memtest.pi. Let's rename it to something like memtest. So, now we need some simple environment to run this Python script and Arch Linux fits this bill very nicely. So, let's get back to Google and let's search for Arch Linux, you know, straight to downloads and let's download the latest build which is this one. Okay, while it's downloading, you will also need some tool to make your USB drive bootable. So let's go with Rufus. Let's download that also. Okay, all downloads are finished, so let's get back to our desktop. Let's install Rufus. Okay, and let's make Arch Linux live USB drive. So as you can see, Rufus already selected my USB drive. Let's select the image we just downloaded here. We don't need any persistence. MRB is just fine. That's fine, fine, fine. Okay, and just push start. And it's done. Okay, let's close Rufus. Let's open our newly made drive and let's copy our script to the root directory. And that's it. Now let's boot our Arch Linux USB drive and go from there. Okay, and we are booted to Arch Linux as root. It's auto login, so you don't have to do anything. As you can see, I have connected my monitor to integrated graphics on motherboard. This will be your setup for most of the cases because when you have bad memory you have artifacts or you don't have any display output at all and i have connected the card that i'm working on with pci express riser so first things first let's find out where arch mounted our usb drive let's ask fdisk to list all our devices and our USB drive is called SDE1. Okay, let's try to mount it. Let's write mount dev SDE1 to MNT. And it seems that it's already mounted at run RTSO boot MNT. Okay, let's change our working directory to run arch iso boot nmt and let's list its contents and we see our memtest python script right here now in order to run the script first we have to figure out 
at what address our video memory is mapped. Let's list our PCI devices and please be verbose. So here we have our Radeon HD 7850 and you can see that all prefetchable memory is mounted at A and it seems like seven zeros. So now we can run our script. So let's ask Python version three to run our memtest PI script at memory address A123456 seven and use 10 megabytes of that memory. Okay, and we have passed our test without any errors. Okay, now let's disable one of the RAM chips by pulling command reference voltage low. If you don't know how to do that, watch my previous video and let's see what happens then. So let's disable, for instance, this one here and run our test one more time and we are hanging. So what just happened is I think quite normal behavior because Linux has fully loaded our kernel driver. You can see it here, it's named Radeon. So when we run our test, memory speed gets up to its operating frequency, but because one of the banks are disabled and there is a lot of errors, it hangs all the system. Of course, this will depend on a lot of factors Sometimes driver doesn't load in the first place because you have a lot of bad memory. But what is important here is that driver tries to load itself and maps memory at some address and we can access it. So in some cases you can run the script and get errors with no problems. And in some cases like this one, system just halts and you cannot do anything further. So how to get away from the situation? Well, the solution to this problem is locking GPU and memory clocks to the lowest frequency possible. And two most obvious options on how to do that would be downclocking through driver. Linux MD GPU driver now is capable of overclocking or downclocking your GPU just fine. But this means installing Arch Linux as standalone operating system, configuring it, and then playing with the driver settings, which is out of the scope of this video because, well, it's called quick tips. And not all GPUs are capable of overclocking or downclocking with this driver. Like for instance, this HD 7850 is not supported. So yeah, this is not a very straightforward solution. The quickest and I think most simple option is to modify BIOS of our VGA card. There are a lot of mod BIOS tools out there, primarily dedicated to Bitcoin mining users. So we are quite lucky in this respect. So let's boot back to Windows and modify our BIOS. Okay, and we're back to Windows. Let's go and download tool called ATI Flash. We will use it to download our BIOS. I mean, if you can't boot to Windows, you will probably want to use the same ATF Flash tool for DOS. But for the sake of not making this video too long, we will use a window version here. So let's extract it here and let's run it as admin. Okay, let's save our BIOS. Let's make it a folder. Let's call it alt bias and it's done. So now we need to modify our saved bias. So let's go back and let's search for Radeon HD 7 series um, bias editor. Yeah, it's called VBA 7. All right, let's download that. Now let's open our old bias, which is here. So let's find out what is the minimum frequencies that our GPU can run. State three is usually the lowest one and we can run minimum at 300 car clock and 150 memory clock. 
because it's Linux. Let's play safe and let's just overwrite all the values that we find. Okay, so we have updated all of our power states. Let's also lower the voltage. It's not strictly needed, but why the hell not? Okay, and it seems we are done. So, let's save our modified BIOS. Let's make a new folder, call it mod BIOS. Let's lead our modded BIOS and let's program and success. Okay, so let's reboot back to our Arch Linux. And we're back to our Arch Linux. Let's go straight to our USB drive. That was run Arch ISO boot NMT. Yep, we are in the right place. And let's run our script one more time with Python 3 mem test pi at a one two three four five six seven with 10 max of memory okay it runs just fine now let's run it again with one of our ram chips disable it and see what happens and we have generated a lot of errors but we didn't crash this time so that's a progress so there's a lot of information here that we can process but I don't want to speculate on things that I don't know, because again, it's not I who wrote the script, all kudos goes to Galkin. So the most important value that you are looking here is ran total errors. In this case, it says every 8.03. So as I understand it, it's a percentage representation of errors from the all memory available. And this number should be almost the same for all the good RAM chips. But when you disable the RAM chip that already has some errors, this number should be lower. I don't know how to explain it more simply, so let me show you. Let's disable one RAM chip by cutting one of the tracks. And let's quickly go through all of the diagnostic procedure. So, let's remove this wire that I installed here when I repair this board and we have one broken track to our RAM ship. This is quite a common fault so let's use our script to find out to which RAM chip this track belongs. And we're back to Arch Linux so let's run our script now and see what happens. So we run our test and we have our RAM total errors count A0.3, but this time we're not disabling any chips. That's the errors that are on board. In real life situation, you will probably have this number higher or lower. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this number will stay the same no matter how many times you will run the script. Let's run it again. And we still have this 8.03. Let's disable our first RAM chip and run this test one more time. And now we get 4.015. So let's write this value down near our chip. That will be 4.015. 0, 1. And let's do the same thing for all other RAM chips. Okay, and I have run our script for all the RAM banks. Just don't forget to reboot each time you touch that uh, ref C voltage because when we do that, we latch those errors there permanently the same way that it was with our artifacts video. So workflow is as follows. Boot up, run the script without doing anything. Make sure that it always the same number. Then short that VRFC voltage and hold that probe in place. Run script again. 
write the value down and reboot. Yeah, of course you could restart the video driver, it's possible, but it's really faster to just reboot. Okay, and our numbers is as follows. All chips are 401, except this one, which is 8.03. Basically, nothing changed when we touch this VRFC voltage. And this gives us indication that all errors that were previously when we just booted are generated in this chip. And what do you know? Is the same chip that we cut the track off. So here you go. This is how you find out which RAM chips to change on AMD boards. So thank you for watching and in the next video I will show you how to do the same thing but on NVIDIA boards and this time using NVIDIA's Mods utility. So stay tuned.